first of all, I would like to point out that the reason I deleted the previous video is due to a copyright claim. I had shown a Family Guy meme, and that was problematic, so I had to take it down. I apologize. It's probably still up on BitShoot if you guys want to see it. But in the meantime, let's talk about something absolutely hilarious. It turns out that in Germany, the supply for far-right-wing extremism uh, outweighs the demand for it. And it's getting to such a ridiculous level where intelligence agencies have to pretend that they are fake right-wing extremists. And there are so many of them doing this that now they have to share information among different departments as to authorities not target each other. This reminds me of a funny scene which happened in my country a couple of years ago. This is uh, on national television during uh, the height of the anti-corruption protests. And you have four police officers dragging a guy who was kicking and screaming. And they start beating him up. And at one point, one of the police officers, he squints his eyes, he looks a little bit closer and says, Lieutenant, Lieutenant, is that you? Turns out they were beating one of their own. Now, the reason for this happening is that it's a very tried and true communist tactic. I mean, it's happening since before Stalin took power. But the whole concept is this. You, you have a group of people that are protesting and they're against the government and they're peacefully protesting. So it's making the government uncomfortable. How can the government get rid of the peaceful protesters? Well, the answer is that it can't because it's their right to protest. So what the government does is like they send the police force and some police officers, they dress in civilian clothing, they infiltrate the protest and they become agitators. So they're, they're starting to try and stir up shit in order to convince other people to stir up shit to the point where then the police has a justification of coming in and dismantling the protest. So that's pretty much what happened there. Like you, you had a police officer in civilian clothing, the lieutenant, which got in, he was trying to start shit, he was throwing bottles at uh, the police line, he was throwing rocks, and eventually they caught him, and they didn't know he was a police officer, so uh, they applied the correction to the wrong person. Now, this tried and true method has been used in Germany as well, like Stalin used it, he created an entire party that didn't even exist, and then people that were problematic were associated with that political party, even though they obviously weren't. It's kind of like what feminists used to do uh, before MRAs and MGTOWs and incels and anything like that. They, they would say that there's this meninist group and anyone that spoke against feminism, they would say, ah, he's a meninist. Ah. It's a, a, a very effective tactic which seems to be used in the United States as well. Like you can see here, whistleblower names another FBI official who allegedly pressured agents to pad domestic extremism stats. So in other words, a whistleblower came forward and he says that um, a lot of cases are labeled as domestic violent extremism in order to boost the case number. Why? Because they want the moral paddock. They want people to feel unsafe and who can provide safety if not the government. The government just requires to give away a little bit of your privacy, give a little bit more taxpayer money and in exchange, they will give you that safety because, look, there's these evil, domestic, violent extremists. And only if you vote left can we get rid of them because they're right-wing extremists. If you vote right-wing, oh, they'll protect their own. As such, it uh, serves a double function. Now, apparently, according to this, uh, statistically speaking, there are more uh, far-left and Islamic extremism in Germany, which uh, honestly makes a lot of sense, considering that all eyes are on right-wing extremism, considering that social media has updated their terms of service and has perfected bots and algorithms in order to detect anything even remotely right-wing extremist. So yeah, I mean, if, if there are any right-wing extremists, I heavily doubt that they're using uh, the online in order to communicate with each other, Again, social media has done its best in order to purge uh, any resemblance of these people. And this is why most violations of TOS right now comes from the far left. If you guys remember when uh, the Supreme Court of the United States uh, went against Roe v. Wade, you had many people on the far left using the N-word against the Supreme Court Justice Thomas Clarence. Uh, when the Queen passed away, some of the most uh, harsh and bewildering language came from the left. 
Why? Because, well, social media, with its terms of service, has managed to get the right-wingers to either get banned or to become submissive, and they watch their language. Meanwhile, people on the far left who are enjoying a position of privilege with social media in 2022, uh, they don't watch their language. They say exactly what they think. They are the only ones that enjoy free speech. So as such, they don't have to sugarcoat words or tongue police themselves. And from a neutral observer, it looks like they're unhinged. This is why you don't see a lot of unhinged right-wingers on social media. It's because uh, the ones that are unhinged has either got banned or they had to police their language so that they don't get banned. Now, what's also interesting is the justification, right? So basically what happens is that you have um, government agents uh, pretending to be far right in order to try to recruit people. And once they recruit people, then they try to convince them to do a crime. And when they do the crime, then they arrest them, right? So this is something that I don't necessarily agree with as a tactic. Um, the, the, the judges in the United States didn't agree with the tactic in the Whitmore case that was uh, also similar. Like you had FBI agents, which uh, I believe tried to convince a person which was also mentally ill to commit a kidnapping. And when the person showed up for uh, committing the act, they got arrested. And the idea is, it's like, oh, well, these people, they're uh, criminals, right? So it's a good thing that the government catches them. But, but I kind of disagree with it. You know, like most of these people who happen to be mentally ill or easy to influence people, like you're going there with the intention of trying to persuade them to commit a crime. But what if you went there with the intention of uh, trying to persuade them to join the military and defend their country? I mean, the same argument can then be used. It's like, well, these people were always patriotic. They just needed a push. Because currently the argument is like, oh, well, these people were always criminals. They just needed a push. It's like, yeah, but why not push them in the right direction then? Like if, if someone is very influential, you know, maybe he is a person that's lonely. He is a person that's uh, mentally ill. And, and he just needs a, a push in the right direction. Why are you pushing him in the wrong direction? Why is taxpayer money pushed in order to get people to commit crimes. This is a tactic that I vehemently disagree with. I, I do not think it's uh, good for society. And the only uh, people that benefit from this are the government agents themselves, because then they get medals, then they get congratulations, they get promotions. It's like, oh, well, you, you managed to catch this guy. Uh, this was used during the Bush era. During the Bush era, they did the same. Like They would try to target vulnerable Muslims, and the left was looking at the tactic and they found it disgusting. And they were saying, oh, well, this is not a tactic that should be encouraged. And now the same tactic is being used in the present. And because I guess the the left is in power, they're cheering this tactic and they're saying, oh, yes, it's, it's so great that it's happening. But in the end, like you're not protecting society. You're, you're just trying to persuade people to do crime so that then you can arrest them. But uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.